Hey everyone, welcome to the Color Sensor Shootout Part 3. Okay, today we're going to have a look at the TCS34725. That's this module here from Adafruit. Now, you can probably notice that it's super dark in the camera view right now. I have no studio lights turned on and the only light I've got coming into my work area right now is from a window with some blinds mostly closed over that's about 8 or 9 meters away from me. The reason I've done that is we're going to go a lot deeper into this sensor. I had a lot of problems with this sensor at the start and I still have some problems with the sensor. If you would have seen my previous video, which is just there if you haven't, I mentioned at the start of it that I actually couldn't get this sensor working and I had erratic values coming through from it and that I contacted Adafruit support about it. So there's a few things that I learned by speaking to Adafruit support about this particular sensor that I didn't thoroughly check or didn't understand exactly what the ramifications were. So the first thing about this sensor is it reads everything as int 16s. So all the values that are coming through are 0 to 65,000 instead of 0 to 255. That's kind of fine if, you know, you just take those values and map them down to 8-bit. But that's not quite how it works because it actually reads four color values. It reads an R, G, B, and a clear value. The clear value is also a 16-bit value. And to actually get the 8-bit RGB values, you need to actually do a lot more maths and incorporate the clear value into it as you're averaging down to get a proper RGB value. So that was my first mistake. I was just doing a, a map using the Arduino map function. It wasn't mapping correctly. I was getting kind of erratic values. I was trying to use a gamma lookup table that's provided inside the example code and that was failing sometimes. And I was at a loss and I thought the module was broken. Well, it turns out it was user error, but understanding how the sensor work is much more complicated than the previous two sensors that we looked at. And I wanted to go through that today. But the first thing I want to do is just run the standard code that I was running before on the previous two sensors. This is sensor is an I2C hookup. So exactly the same as the previous one. We've got a ground. VCC, and we've got our two I2C cables that are going into A4 and A5 on the Nano. It's the, the same test bed that I was doing on the previous videos. I've got an Arduino Nano compatible. I've got a color OLED display. And in this case, I've got a button, and the button's gonna be for the second part of this video. So for now, let's just turn it on and see what happens. Sorry that the LED is super bright, but I, I need to keep the environment in fairly low light for the sensor to even be partly usable. So the first thing you'll notice is well, a very high red value coming through, but all the values are getting close to 100 just by default, which to me doesn't make a lot of sense. If I go and grab some black, I'm going to use my soldering iron cleaner because it's although it's it's got a shiny-ish surface, it's it's pretty matte. So I'm going to grab this. I'm going to put this next to it and see how low we can get. One of the tricks I found with this particular sensor is that you, if you held it on a bit of an angle like this you sometimes get better readings. But as you can see, I can't even get close to black. All right, 75, 99, 88, that's the best I can get. So, wow, that's a bit of a disappointment. I expected it to be much closer. If I just grab my PLA that I was using before, the black that I used in the other videos, and I put that close to it, it's even worse. Like we're getting a 64 for red, but we're getting 104 for green. So, it can't detect black. Great, what about what? I've got a uh, letter from my tax department right here. Let's put it next to the white and see what we can read. Okay, we almost got a high value there. Right, so white seems to be okay if I hold it on an angle. As you notice, if I put it straight down, it doesn't work very well. If I pull it back and hold it on a bit of an angle, we can get 255, 255, 255. Great, so white can work, but black can't. So what does that mean? Well, that means that when I'm trying to detect color, the values are just gonna be kind of all over the place. So if I grab blue and put it next to here, can it detect it's blue? Absolutely. But look at the green values and look at the red values. Now this is as blue as you can pretty much get this PLA. And it's detecting it's blue, but the other values are just way off. Okay, let's try green. Once again, it can detect green, but look at the red and look at the blue. This is as green as you can get. Now, I've got my trusty cup, which I can try, but instead I'm going to use some red PLA. I pulled apart the ultrasonic eyes case to use this. Again, this is as red as you can get. And this is, you know, it's detecting it's red, 176, 178 on the red channel, but look at the blue and the green. So, will it pass my test of detecting red, green, and blue? 
Absolutely it will. So that's a pass, great. But I was a little disappointed in terms of the color sensor, how accurate it was. So I thought I'd do some more digging and try to work out exactly what's going on. I will be looking at the code for my project later on at the end of this video because it's quite complex to look at the, the maths step downs I need to do to actually get some decent values. But the first thing I thought I'd do is add a calibration pass. Now with the TCS 230, it could actually detect almost black and it could detect almost white. So I could just do an auto calibration where I held it next to something black and when it detected low enough, it would trigger the black calibration. But because I can't get the values low enough for black on this sensor, I had to actually implement a manual calibration system. So what I'm gonna do right now is just in my code, I'm gonna enable the calibration pass and recompile. Once that comes back up, you'll see on the screen, it'll put me into a calibration mode. First off, let me say that having to do a manual calibration to get this sensor working is a pretty terrible thing. Again, you don't need to if you just want to do some basic, is this red, green, or blue? But if you want to do anything where it's actually doing a color match or trying to get an accurate reading of color, you have to do a calibration pass. It's looking for black, it's asking me to, to calibrate black. So I'll take my soldering iron cleaner again, I'll get it to it, and I'll get it as low as I can get the values. Can I get it lower? There you go. And I'll mark that as black. Okay, now I'll get my trusty letter from the text department. And it's going to be a bit harder to do. I'm going to have to uh, hold it and get my finger working. I need to get as close to 255 as I can. Or 256 in this case. Okay, I missed. I think I got it 213 on the red, but that's okay. So now we're calibrated. So why is it showing me red? That's kind of weird. I've noticed that the sensor has a tendency to lean towards red from a data coming through, which in this case it could be because the other values are 256 and then I got 213 for the red. So there's a bit of a discrepancy there, but not 128 in terms of discrepancy. A few people on the Adafruit forums commented about a shift towards red. But let's see what happens now if we try to do some color sense. So I'm going to grab my blue, I'm going to put it next to blue, and now as you can see, we're not getting a massive blue value, but we're getting no red and no green. So not only is that detecting blue correctly, but the actual swatch color, you can't really tell on camera, is fairly close. It's not quite as vibrant, but that's pretty good. So what about green? Let's grab our green, put it in front. And now, as you can see, if I hold it still, we're getting zero, we're getting 50-ish and zero. It's definitely detecting green. The swatch is fairly close. There's a little bit of red seeping in and that just could be that error for my calibration. That's a much better value. Let's look at the red again. Okay, we're getting a, a much higher red value than we are at the other colors because of that shift, but we're getting zero and zero for the green and the blue. What about black? Let's grab our PLA. And again, a bit of a shift on the red, but we're getting black now. And what about white? We're getting, again, if I hold on a bit of an angle, a bit hard to do. There we go, 255, 255, 255. So all of a sudden, the sensor can read color much more accurately. Let's take our friend, Mr. Pac-Man, who is yellow. Hi, Mr. Pac-Man. And let's see if we can detect yellow. Look at that. We're getting a really nice shade of yellow. We're getting a solid red. We're getting a pretty high green value, as you'd expect, and no blue. So all of a sudden, we've got pretty good color checking. Let me grab my cup. This cup's from today. It's not from the other videos. Again, we're getting pretty good red. So all of a sudden, this sensor is the most accurate sensor I've tried so far. But look at the steps I had to go through. I'm not sure it's worth it. So I'm a little disappointed on the sensor. There is some example code that does some auto ranging. I couldn't make heads or tails out of the code. It's, yeah. So what the calibration code does is I tell it what is black when I hit the button, it stores the minimum values that it was reading at the time. And then when I tell it to check for white, I hit the button and it stores the maximum RGB values that it's reading at the time. And then it just translates my values of this reading between the min and the max. So it's just doing a straight up map. It's not fantastic, but as you can see, it's working. So let's have a look at some code. The code's actually running. And you can see the serial log here. It's printing what it's currently showing for RGB and a min and a max because it's in calibration mode right now. So let's go to the top. I'm using the Adafruit graphics library and the SSD1331 library for the OLED display. I've got the wire library for I2C. 
and I'm using the TCS34725 library for the sensor. I've got some SPI pins to set up, so we're using hardware SPI for the OLED. I've got a define for the button, which is GPIO2. I've got a define for calibration, it's currently set to true. That's how I turn calibration on and off. I've got some definitions for just some colors, some I use, some I don't. So over here we're initializing the sensor, and what you can do, you can pass it a, a timing value. It's currently set to 50 millisecond integration time. There's a quite complex documentation for the sensor and there's all different values you can set it to in timings. It's quite intricate. I'm just going by what the default values are in the example code. You can also tell it how much gain to use. I've tried values between one and four. Uh, one, I couldn't get it to calibrate white. The, the maximum I can get was about 120 on each channel, but with a gain of four times, I can get it to 255. I've got some global variables, RGB. The reason they're global is I use them to print out values in different methods and use them all over the place. So it's just easier to keep them global rather than pass them around. I've got some minimum RGB values, which start off being set to the maximum, which is 255. So that way they can only go lower and starting max values that get set to zero because they can only go higher. I've got a uh, min threshold, which is what it's using now to say this channel has to be greater than the other channels by this much for it to be selected as a match. Calibration state int, which is basically zero, it's calibrating black, one is calibrating white, and two is done. And we're initializing the OLED here. Uh, initializing serial, we're starting serial session 9600. So we initialize the sensor and we get a, a found sensor if it's found it. Uh, if it can't find it, it just tells you and does a halt. I'm setting the pin mode for the button to be an input. I'm starting the screen uh, in the display variable. I'm telling it to fill in black. And if we're calibrating, I'm setting the calibration state to zero for black. I'm printing that on the screen, as you would have seen on the screen before. Otherwise, I'm just setting the minimum to zero and max to 255. I've got a do button method, which basically gets called when the button's pressed. The calibration state zero, it sets the min values to the current RGB values, and then it prints on the screen, calibrate white, and it sets the state to white. If the calibration state's currently white, it sets the max values to RGB, fills the screen to black, and sets the calibration state to two, which means calibration's finished. In our loop, this code here is basically straight out of the examples, or most of this is, I've just, I've padded it out a bit because I've had everything on one line. So basically we're creating 16-bit unsigned ints for red, green, blue, and clear. You tell the TCS to set interrupt equals false. Does a delay of 60 milliseconds because it's a 50 millisecond read that we set earlier. It grabs the raw data and then it does a set interrupt true which turns off the LED. Then we're creating a 32-bit unsigned int for the clear and storing that in sum. This is their code. I'm not sure why they're doing it, why it's 32 because we're capturing it at 16. Maybe they just want some extra precision. And then we're creating a, a cached local variable for RGB as floats. We're setting R equals the red value and then we're dividing it by sum. Same with the green equals the green value, G equals green value and divided by sum, and B equals the blue value divided by sum. Then we're multiplying RGB back out by 256. I'm then storing the RGB values into my global variables. I'm then checking to see whether the button's been pressed. I'm not worrying about debouncing at the moment. We've got that delay in here anyway. So technically it's only reading a button press every 60 milliseconds. I'm then printing the RGB value out regardless of whether we're in calibration state or not to the serial output. Then I'm saying, okay, if we're in calibration mode, if the calibration state is less than two, which means we're still calibrating, I'm displaying what the RGB value is on the screen, because that way we don't have to look at the log when we're calibrating. And then I'm exiting early. I don't want to run into the rest of this code while we're in calibration mode. Assuming calibration mode is either off or we finish calibrating, we then come down, and I'm doing this as separate lines right now just to make it easier rather than putting maps inside constraints. It just makes it hard to read. So I'm storing temporary R2, G2, and B2 values, which are just mapped versions of my RGB, which is getting stored up top here. And I'm mapping the min and the max value of them to zero and 255. If it's at the min, it goes to zero. And if it's at the max, it goes to 255. And if it's anything in between those two values, it sits between zero and 255. And then I'm doing a constraint on them to make sure they're actually clamped at zero and 255. And the reason I'm doing that is it's very easy to, when you're calibrating, because the black values are so high and the white values jump around quite a lot when you move the sensor around, uh, I've often had a max value that is lower than a min value. And then what you end up with is a negative number for either R, G or B, and you just can't have that. 
So I'm just constraining them now to make sure that they get clamped. So they're clamped now. I know the, the data's good. And then I've, what I do is I go through and I have a state color, which is for the, the swatch matching, which basically if the state color is zero, it means we've matched red. If it's one, we've matched green. And if it's two, we've matched blue. And if it's negative one, it's black still. And we start off at negative one. And then we say if the, the red value is greater than B plus a threshold and the red value is greater than G plus a threshold, then our color must be red. Otherwise, if, if green is greater than red and green is greater than blue, it's one, otherwise it's two. So then we go and create a, a color int value that we're converting from RGB 24 bit to the 565 color space for the display. This is an Adafruit thing. I'm just copying their code out. I'm then displaying the RGB values on the screen at the top. I'm displaying the main color swatch, which is that color variable. And then if state color equals negative one, I'm just showing black for the little tiny swatch. Otherwise I'm showing red, green or blue. That's pretty much it. The rest of it is just helper methods. We've got the print RGB, which is printing what you're seeing in the serial over here. And I've got that convert method down below. So that's it, that's the code. So, you know, looking at this stuff here, that just looks a bit messy to me. Like that is, I mean, it's not a lot of code, but it's just, you know, we, we're having divided by the clear and then multiplied out by 256. We're starting off with 16 bit values and we have to get them to eight bit values. I don't understand why we just can't do a, a redraw 8-bit. Why, why they, the system can't give us the correct colors to start with. Uh, I, I don't see any advantage in dealing with them in the 16-bit color space because, anyway, that's the code. Let's get back to the rest of the video. Okay, one other thing to note about the sensor is detection distance. With the TCS 230, it was about, I think, a 10 or 12 centimeter detection distance. We got to about seven centimeters with the proximity sensor. Let's have a look at how close we need to be to detect with this sensor. Now the, the red shift is a bit of a problem because that's really getting in the way. As you can see, it's got to get quite close to determine this green. A color value has to be 10 units higher than the other two for it to detect greens, as you would have seen here, where normally in the previous video, that 38 would have been above 35 and it would have gone green. It needs to be 10 higher in this case, but that's two centimeters. That's really close it needs to be. Even if I pull it back a bit and try to get it to the one unit difference, which is about there, it's two and a half centimeters. So that has to be really close for it to detect the color. Put it back at the two, there we go. And if we go two and a half, you can't detect what it is anymore. So accurate color sensing, but you need to be really, really close to the sensor. So there it is, it's the TCS 34725 from Adafruit. I had high hopes for it. It can be made to be a very accurate sensor, but the amount of steps you need to go through to have that happen to me is just too much. I'm going to probably stick with the TCS 230 for my project going forward. Stay tuned for part four, where I'm going to build a color sensor from scratch using an RGB LED and a photoresistor and some pretty hacky code. Until then, uh, thumbs up if you think it's worth it, thumbs down if you didn't like the video, and if that's the case, I'm sorry. Don't forget to subscribe and like, and until next time, catch you later.